Hey guys, welcome back. So today I've got something a little bit different. In this box, I have a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And I'm pretty excited about this one. I looked into these about seven years ago, and at the time they were about $1,000. Anyway, fast forward to today and things have changed. This particular model made by CN Sui Power sells on Amazon for about $215. That is a good deal. I mean, it wasn't long ago that the best you could get for that price was a modified sine wave inverter. And they're not even comparable. So I'm gonna get this one out of the box. We'll get it set up. I'm gonna hit pause here and turn you back on in a second. All right, got everything hooked up. And as you can see, there's a lot going on here. So I'm gonna cover all this in detail in a minute, but you know, first wanted to disclose that this inverter here, it was given to me by the manufacturer. So they're not paying me per se, but the unit is free. So take that for what it's worth. And as far as the setup goes, you know, I guess I'll start here with the batteries. These are two 12 volt deep cycle batteries that actually I pulled out of my RV this morning and they are hooked in parallel. Now, there are different options on this inverter as far as what voltage uh, input they accept. I chose the 12 volt one because it's easier for me to test with. But if you're serious about this, I do recommend getting their 24 or 48 volt versions. You know, that way it's a lot easier to deal with the wiring. You don't need these big, huge, uh, beefy cables. But in this case, it is the 12 volt version. Um, also connected to the batteries, I have this charger. I do have it set to charge at 20 amps, basically to keep this battery topped off. I plan on putting some pretty heavy loads on this inverter and I don't want anything shutting down due to low voltage. Two batteries is, is kind of the minimum for running something like this. You know, the more batteries you have, the better, but two should be enough for what I want to do. Um, also, I have an amp clamp hooked up measuring the DC current. And this puts out quite a bit of current to get to 2000 watts. I mean, 2000 watts, that's about 170 amps DC. You know, in this case, I'm only gonna be testing to about 1500 watts. So that meter will probably get close to 125 to 130 amps continuous out of those batteries. Uh, we also have a multimeter hooked up to the battery bank. You can see it's reading 13.7 volts and the inverter itself does display that information. Let me turn it on. And I have the oscilloscope hooked up as well. You'll see the voltage, it ramps up over the course of a few seconds. That's a soft start feature, which is uh, nice to protect you know, sensitive equipment. Uh, on the display here, we do have two meters. First one says 120 volts, which agrees with the kilowatt. And the bottom one's the battery voltage. We're at 13.6, 13.7, and that's in agreement with that. So those gauges seem to be pretty accurate. You know, the back of this unit is where you hook up the battery, and there's also some cooling fans as well. And the front of the unit, besides the displays, we have two power outputs. One is a standard outlet that you'd find here. Uh, this company does make a lot of variants of this inverter, so they do make a 230 volt version at 50 hertz and lots of different outlet choices. So pretty much no matter where you live, they have something that is appropriate for your power grid. Um, and the bottom connection here is actually two lugs, and that's for hooking up like a more permanent installation into a transfer switch, whether it's your house or like a mobile home. And we have a couple ways to turn this inverter on and off. First one being this remote switch right here. And that's how I turned it on. You can actually see the switch on the unit is still off. If I turn this one on, then the remote switch is basically overridden at that point. So depending upon how you wanna set it up, just keep that in mind. And we have a power indicator light here and an alarm light for when you have a, a low voltage situation or a high voltage situation, you know, the unit will shut down. Uh, the oscilloscope, as you can see, it is showing a nice clean sine wave. 
And if we look here on the kilowatt, you can see the voltage, the hertz. And I guess that's it until we put a load on it. So I'm going to leave this to measure watts. That's what I'm most interested in is to see what the wattage is that we're pulling out of this system and how everything handles it. So I'm going to start off easy. I'm going to get a drill and uh, that's about 200 watts and we'll see how it handles that. All right, we got the drill hooked up. This pulls roughly 200 watts. It is an inductive load, so there is a surge associated with that, and it is going to create some noise on the system. You know, people ask all the time, is my generator safe to run the stuff in my house? And the answer is, it depends. I mean, generators, if it's not an inverter generator, you're going to have a dirtier starting point. And then based on what you put on it, whether it's an inductive load or a capacitive load, it's going to cause more noise in the system. And if you're starting off dirty, then it's only going to go downhill. In this case, things are pretty clean. So I'm going to give this a go. We'll take a look at how many watts are being pulled out. We'll take a look at the sine wave to see if it changes at all. And we'll also take a peek here at the amps being pulled from the batteries. All right, so not too bad. It was pulling about 170 watts. You know, the sine wave looked pretty good. And we're pulling about 17 amps from the battery bank. So overall, I'd say that was a good test. Uh, let's get out the space heater and give that a go. All right, I got the space heater all hooked up. I chose this one because I can flip between 750 watts and 1500. The kilowatt is still set up to measure the watts and everything else is the same. So let's start with 750 and see how it does. Okay, pretty good. Let's check the volts. We're at 117 volts. 59.7 hertz. So that's pretty good. The battery's down to 12 point, about 12.3 volts and we're pulling 68 amps out of those batteries. So now I'm gonna flip it over to 1500. And the fans just kicked on on the inverter. We're at 1425 on the wattage. Sine wave still looks good. Hertz are good, 59.7. And volts dropped a bit to 116. Not too bad. Battery voltage is dropping a bit. It's at 11.96. We're pulling 142 amps out of those batteries. So pretty uh, substantial. Definitely need a big battery bank to do this for any length of time. But, you know, I would say that this is a pass. So let's break out the microwave. Well, I got the microwave set up kind of precariously on my tools, but I think it'll do. I'm gonna try cooking this meal. This needs to be cooked for four minutes, and I think it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, not for the inverter, but for those batteries. Anyway, the microwaves, they have a huge surge associated with them. I mean, this one I think pulls about 1500 continuous watts, but to start a microwave, you're gonna need probably closer to 3,000 watts, maybe a little bit more. And actually my first generator I ever owned was a 3,250 watt generator, and it could not power my microwave. It would fall on its face and stall. So this will be a good test. I think it can do it, assuming the batteries are up to it. So let's give it a go.
So far, so good. We're at 1,400 volts, close to 1,500. There's a look at the sine wave. You can see it is a little bit distorted due to the uh, inductive nature of this microwave. Battery voltage, it's okay. It's holding at 11.95. You can see we're pulling close to 150 amps out of this battery bank. I think we're going to make it. We're down to 26 seconds. Wattage dropped a bit. 1400 watts hertz are rock solid voltage 116 sine wave looks good we're at 11.92 on the battery bank and 142 amps from the batteries and the wires i wouldn't say they're cool but they are slightly warm and we made it Yeah, not bad. I chose this one because no one likes it and it's a really freezer burnt, but it did the job. You know, this inverter, you know, starting a microwave is not an easy thing. So this inverter did pretty well, all things considered, and I would recommend it. You know, a pure sine wave any day over a modified sine wave. And to that end, I do have a cheap modified sine wave inverter. So I'm going to hook that up and just show you the difference. All right, here is the cheap inverter. This one I actually bought from a gas station. You know, I needed to charge my laptop in a pinch, and that was my only choice. So it actually did charge the laptop. So I guess I can't say too many bad things about it, but it is a modified sine wave, and I'm not expecting it to look anything like a sine wave. It's probably going to look more like a square. Anyway, I've got... The oscilloscope hooked up, the kilowatt hooked up, as well as this drill. This is only rated at 150 watts, so most likely it's not going to get that drill spinning, but let's give it a try. Wow. That's a mess. I was expecting it to look like a square. And I guess it kind of does if you use your imagination, but yeah, that's a mess. Anyway, this says peak to peak, we're at about 37 volts. Uh, the kilowatt disagrees. It says 111 volts at 61 hertz. And that one says 61 hertz. So yeah, not, not too good. Anyway, let's see if it'll power the drill. Yeah, not too well, but I knew that we're definitely exceeding what this can do. And after seeing that, I'm going to think twice about uh, using this inverter again. Anyway, I guess for the final test, I do have a Honda EU2000. That's also a pure sine wave inverter. So I want to hook that up to the oscilloscope, get a look at the sine wave, and then we'll try putting a load on it and see if the sine wave changes at all. Okay, I've got the oscilloscope, kilowatt, and the space heater hooked up to a Honda EU2000. Uh, that's the one I did a video on recently where it had a bad valve and low compression. If you're interested in that, I'll link to that up above and down in the description. So I'm going to go outside, we'll start that Honda, and we'll check out the waveform. The waveform on the Honda looks a little bit weird on this oscilloscope. You see how it's kind of... It almost looks like the voltage is going up and down, but also the peaks are kind of moving a little bit. It's a little bit unusual. Anyway, we're at 126 volts. 59.9 hertz. 
Let's put on a 750 watt load. Waveform looks pretty good. Almost 800 watts, 60 hertz, 122 volts. Now we're at 1500 watts. Still looks pretty decent. Voltage is down to 118 volts. Hertz are dead on. Well, that pretty much wraps it up. The Honda surprised me a bit. I was expecting it to be just as clean as this inverter, but it wasn't the case. It was, something was a bit off with the power output. Anyway, as far as this inverter goes, would I recommend it? Yeah, I would. I mean, it seems to be doing a good job and doing what it says it does. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.